Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me for Shaman Talk on the topic of shamanism versus spirituality. Please do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook at Shaman Talk, Hmong Shamanism and Spiritual Awareness. Today, I want to talk about shamanism and spirituality and how they are related. Um, are they the same thing? How are they different? Shamanism is having the ability to interact, to communicate with, and to trance in order to perform rituals that can and may impact the spiritual side, causing manipulations in the in the balances of those who wish to seek the services of a shaman. Consequently, this affects the physical side and brings balances to the individual in body, mind, and spirit. A shaman is someone who, ha who was born with this gift and it is in his or her blood. It is passed on from his ancestors and the ancestors before him. The gift of being a shaman should not be taken lightly as it comes with a lot of responsibilities. It's important for a shaman to stay true to the teachings and the practices of a shaman so that the integrity of shamanism is not compromised. On the other hand, spirituality is the belief that we are connected to one another. Um, and to another force in the universe that is higher than ourselves. It is also um, involving the belief that we have a soul and our soul is connected to this higher existence, which connects all souls in some way. Um, there are people who believe or feel that they have none or spiritual guides. Uh, but some of these people are actually experiencing a spiritual awakening experience and not a shamanic uh, aware, awakening experience. The difference is that a shamanic calling is one that you are born with, while a spiritual awakening um, experience can happen to anyone. People with a shamanic calling will need to follow the ways of a shaman so that he or she can nurture his development into becoming um, um, The shaman will be able to trance, to open his third eye, to travel across the spiritual realms in order to restore order for the human souls that um, he is trying to help. Uh, he will travel near and far across dimensions in order to search for the causes of imbalances and disorders for an individual. The shaman will often be able to perform a ritual of some sort to manipulate the spiritual energies and events in order to restore balances for an individual. If you are not able to to perform these kinds of rituals, then you walk as a spiritual healer, but you may not necessarily walk the path of a shaman. As a human being, we are all um, spiritual beings as well. We vibrate at a certain frequency, which allows us to live and breathe and coexist with our spiritual energy, which is our soul. When there is um, balance, we are happy, we can focus and carry out our daily lives. We are healthy and productive, and we often do not feel um, or connect to our spirituality. When there are imbalances of some sort, our wellness becomes compromised, and we may start to feel affected in our mental wellness, our productivity, and our physical health as well. We might start to lack focus. We might lose the ability to turn to tune in to our goals and become more sporadic. And we might lose sight of where we want to go. We might find an inclination 
and desire towards wanting to find a spirit, uh, to find a higher purpose and wander about our own purposes. When you are not balanced in mind, body, and spirit, you will wander off away from where you were and you will develop an um, affinity uh, towards wanting to connect more with what might be out there or a greater force in the universe, a greater calling, a greater purpose, or you might just shut down. Um, this is because as you become imbalanced, there is disorder within you on the spiritual side. This disorder attempts to find order and therefore what is affected first is your mental health. You might seek out ways to try and restore this imbalance. Some people will try uh, meditation. Some will seek out a psychic for answers. Others will seek out sham sham shamans or spiritual healers. What's actually happening to you may not necessarily be that you have a shamanic calling, but you just have a desire to restore your imbalances. Your spiritual energy will have a natural tendency to want to find um, order, but it doesn't know how to actually restore order for itself. Um, because we are all spiritual beings, we all have the potential to open up our um, chakras and eventually our third eye. Just as um, Buddhist monks can spend their whole lifetime trying to find um, nirvana, human beings can invest a lot of time into meditation in order to open their chakras and open their third eye. Um, by doing this, some of you will in fact loosen your blockages and loosen the spiritual barrier that has been set up to separate um, Ya from Yang uh, or the physical realm from the spiritual realm. If you meditate over the course of time and uh, you can balance yourself with the surrounding energy around you, you can remove blockages and clear your chakras. You can open your third eye so that you will feel the higher energy from the spiritual realm. You, will, you might feel an increase in intuition, in feeling the emotions of others, in feeling the energy around you. This does not happen overnight, uh, but takes much dedication into spiritual medica meditation. Um, by unblocking your chakras and opening your third eye, uh, you have enabled yourself to raise your vibrations beyond that of the average human. Uh, you will feel some level of spirituality within yourself and you might be able to have some psychic abilities. But this will not and does not mean that you have a shamanic calling or that you will become a shaman. Basically, you have lifted the spiritual veil and uh, which had been set up to separate humans from spirits. This is something that the heavens um, have set up so that uh, so that it is not an open doorway for uh, it is not a doorway for um, open free interactions between the two realms. Um, however, because you have invested many, many um, hours to meditation, uh, you might be able to break down that wall and lift that veil which protected you from the hours, uh, which protected you from the spiritual side. You basically raise your uh, vibrations, allowing your spiritual energy to connect to your higher self. Uh, your higher self is uh, the intuition, the feeling you get that guides you and gives you the feeling of knowing uh, the feeling beyond, um, you know, just being blinded to what's out there. Uh, you'll feel um, like you have an extra intuition that as if, you know, someone is guiding you, as if you, you feel like you have, um, you know, angels looking over you or you have someone protecting you. Um, <clears throat> 
So you basically raise your vibrations and allowing your spiritual energy to connect to your higher self. Um, this is what you tune into when you do car readings uh, or give advice to others uh, who may seek you out for a spiritual reading. Uh, anybody who has a spiritual soul has the potential to experience this higher intuition and connection to your higher self. However, it will be easier for some people than for others. For some, their spiritual side is just really strong. So it will take a lot more effort on their part and a lot more dedication and more time with meditation in order to make any connection of any kind. For others, it will not be as difficult and will take less time. That's not to say that you will not have to devote, you know, uh, many, many, many hours um, into meditation. It might take even years for you to be able to uh, open, uh, you know, your chakras and to open your third eye. Um, when you have accomplished the state of existence where you are in tune with your higher self, you have opened your third eye to spirituality. You can continue to work to develop the skill and grow. However, if you are not gifted as a shaman, you will not be able to trance or heal in the same way a shaman does. That's not to say that you will not be able to um, help others. Um, your gift will just be different. I think uh, this is the disconnect that is causing some people to feel stuck. They might have been told that they have a shamanic calling, but they may just be very spiritual and building connections to their higher self on the spiritual level. Um, they might not have a true shamanic calling and will not be able to make progress as one. Um, as I've said, um, as humans, we are all very capable uh, of reaching a higher state of existence by raising our vibrations and connecting to our higher self. This can be done if everybody decided that they wanted to connect with their higher self, if everybody had that desire and they devoted, uh, you know, hours and hours and just um, much time into meditation, into trying to open their chakras, into trying to open their third eye, everybody will be able to connect to their spirituality, their spiritual uh, higher self. Uh, some people, such as the um, shamans of Latin America, they use uh, psych psychedelics to achieve a uh, shamanic-like state in order to perform um, certain healings for their communities. These are valid ways to connect with the spiritual realm. Spirituality is not a universe that is very, very, very far away. It is actually just uh, interconnected with us as a multi-dimensional existence. Our brain um, is actually the greatest key player in how any of this is achieved. Therefore, um, psychedelics are just um, causing manipulations in the brain and therefore allows the individual to experience what is perceived as hallucinations, uh, which in actuality is the spiritual experience. People who use uh, certain drugs may be prone to experiencing hallucinations. The reality is that the drugs really are um, manipulating your brain and opening doors to the spiritual realm uh, because um, it's causing shifts in your brain that allows for the lifting of the spiritual barrier or veil. From a spiritual perspective, these people are actually not hallucinating, but they really are having a spiritual experience brought about by the drugs, which are acting as uh, psychedelics. Um, I really discourage the use of psychedelics uh, because they are dangerous. Um, they do not allow you to have control 
over what crosses over and what happens will be beyond your control. Um, doors that you may open may not be easily closed, um, especially if you are um, using certain drugs over the course of time. Um, these drugs that might act as psychedelics uh, over the course of time. drugs uh, um, for these situations, um, it becomes your reality and it is a spiritual experience that is very real for you. If you found yourself in these situations, you are not having a shamanic experience and you are not necessarily gifted. Your behaviors and choices have just opened doors to the spiritual realm for you. And you will have to seek out a shaman who can close that door in order for you to be normal again. The shaman will have to remove those entities that have crossed over and um, Basically, they've invaded your space and they are, um, you know, they, they in, a, in a sense, are possessing your, um, your energy and they're uh, manipulating, uh, you know, your surrounding and you. And so um, you would have to um, seek a, out a shaman. Um, so that the shaman can remove those entities and push them back. Uh, not all shamans will be able to do this for you. Uh, so you want to make sure you seek someone who has experience dealing with these situations. You also want to make sure that you abstain from the habit as much as possible to help push back those entities and to prevent them from coming back once you have sought um, help. So my message for today is that you need to be careful in how you approach your spiritual journey. A shamanic calling is always spiritual, but a spiritual journey is not always um, shamanic in nature. If you want to connect to your higher self and you want to have a spiritual experience, it should be something that is done with caution and always take measures to protect yourself. No one should meditate with the hopes that it will open your shamanic pathway for you, for it will likely not be able to do that. A shamanic pathway can only be open with the help of a, um, you know, a shaman master or itu sifuna. Uh, to bridge your guides to you in almost all cases without a sifu um, to bridge your guides to you you can have a spiritual experience but it will not likely be shamanic in nature you can open the doors to the spiritual side but you will not be able to trance and travel to bridge your guides to yourself without the proper tools and procedures being followed um, lastly a spiritual awakening is not a shamanic awakening. So please be careful when you meditate so that you are not opening yourself up to impure um, energies in your surrounding. Use a protective measure to protect yourself while you meditate. Um, initially, when you start, you know, you won't really feel much. And so you might feel like, oh, there's no danger in it. But as you do it over and over again, uh, over the course of time, um, when much time has passed, then uh, you start to, you know, open your uh chakras and open that uh, spiritual door, then um, that's when you'll start to feel the uncertainty and you'll start to feel uneasy. So um, what I suggest is to always use a protective measure to protect yourself from the very beginning. 
Um, you may refer to uh, my video about using a sword as a protective measure. Uh, you will follow the same procedure and steps, but you will use the sword to draw a ring around yourself before you sit down to meditate. Instead of um, drawing it around your bed or um, drawing, you know, marking your door, you would, you would draw uh, circles. You would draw three circles around yourself, around the area that you will be, um, that you will be meditating at. So, uh, you know, if you're going to meditate, then you should stand in the um, location that you will be meditating. And you can use um, a knife, which serves as a sword, and you will draw a circle around you on the outside, on the floor, and uh, you will uh, say the same things as I, you know, I referred refer to in my video, um, but you're drawing the line to protect yourself. So the barrier is around you. Um, so lastly, in all things that we do, our goal is to be well in mind, body, and spirit. Um, thank you for tuning in, and um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.